we've been doing the Ray Foundation scholarships here since 2013. And um, so you have all these teenage private pilots who are still in high school. They get a scholarship to get a private pilot's license, and then what? And what do you do? So we, uh, we got a, a uh, cub donated to us and by Mr. Ray, and the students restored that cub over three years after school and weekends. So the criteria to be involved in the Lakeland Aero Club is a student needs to be between the ages of 14 and 24 with an interest in aviation. We're a hands-on program. More than half of our members are interested in restoring and building airplanes. A great number of them have developed an interest in aerospace engineering. So flying is just part of it. Um, they're learning social skills. Everything you see here is maintained by the students, the building, the grass, the runway, the airplanes. They take out the trash, mow, the, you know, mow uh, clean the floors, clean the bathrooms. Everything is done by the students and they all pick different areas they want to work on. We have four projects going on, three trailer craft restoration projects and a Cessna 150, as well as a, a lot of five projects. We have a Sonics Xenos motor glider. Hello everyone, I'm Ben Coleman. I am the host now for Plane Time. Welcome to the Florida Air Museum here at the Aerospace Center for Excellence. It's so good to be here. We are streaming live. This is a live presentation and we are here for you. Uh, and we're going to be talking about aviation maintenance, aviation safety in general, all the Florida Aviation Network. And if you are uh, watching this, you already know where it is. If you're not watching this, it doesn't matter. But go tell somebody that uh, you're going to www.floridaaviationnetwork.com and uh, you should be able to pick this up. This will be also aired uh, afterwards where it's going to be recorded for, po for po what is it? posterity, everything. It's going to be there forever. So we are here today with, the, I don't know if we're able to get this shot in it with the mic. Mike? Good morning, sir. Mike, what is your last name? It's Zig Junis, but if you, if you master it, nobody will know who you're talking about because everybody knows me as Mike Z. Can we call you as Mike Z? Yeah, that's a lot. How easier. about just Mike? That, that'll work, too. All right. Mike, congratulations. You were the first guest back here. We haven't done the uh, plane time for about 15 years. We thought it was time to bring it back for many, many reasons. The Sun and Fun uh, uh, Expo campus here in uh, Lakeland, Florida, was kind enough to allow us to be here at the Florida Air Museum. Beautiful, beautiful place. I'm going to see it on the B-roll once we get this in post-production. So you may not be able to see it live. But again, did we mention this was live, Mike? I think uh, once or twice. Okay. <laughs> and that there's some benefits and there's some negatives to that. You get to see all of it, raw, uncut, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, hey. Well, I'm sorry, I, did, I, I, I normally don't refer to my guests as ugly, but uh, in, in Mike's case, that fits them. But uh, Mike, tell us a little bit, and, and the reason we bring playing time to you is to develop the youth in aviation and how important maintenance is for youth in aviation and for aviation safety in general. The, the whole premise of the uh, Central Florida Aerospace Academy is it's one of the very few uh, high schools for aviation, uh, I, think, I guess, in the country, maybe even the world, but there's not too many of them, Mike, and you can speak a little bit more to that. All right, so about uh, 10 years ago, um, the Central Florida Aerospace Academy was started right here on the Sun and Fun Expo campus, and uh, it has grown now. There's about 350 students in the school. It is a Polk County Public High School, so the students can, can attend the school like they would any other high school, but all of the electives are aviation-themed electives. 
That's not very common in high school, is it? No, and we're also unique as I believe we're the only public high school located on airport property. Mm -hmm. Well, what, and we, you can develop this if you're interested in coming to uh, CFAA. Go to the, the website, just Google Central Florida, I guess CFAA.org. I'm not sure of the exact website, but uh, either whatever search engine you want, we're not plugging Google, but whatever search engine you want, Central Florida Aerospace Academy, and it'll come up. That's the beauty part about some of the information superhighway we have today. Let's use it. Let's use it for our benefit, not to our detriment, but to the benefit of uh, whatever vocation you're involved with. And Mike, that's what brings me to uh, something that you are uh, ultimately involved with is education and training. Mm -hmm. What is the Aero Club? Tell me about it. Okay, so uh, we have a, a high school on an airport. Um, Sun and Fun uh, has a, a scholarship that'll teach you to fly. So you're 17 years old with a private pilot's license and you, um, and you get your private pilot's license, what do you do? How do you keep flying? Um, so the Aero Club kind of grew out of that, and it started with one cub. Uh, we restored it uh, three years after school and weekends. It was, all the work was done by teenagers under adult supervision. I'm an a and IA. And, uh, what the, I, I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, I forgot. What does a and IA? Well, these are initials or something. What does it mean? Um, airframe and power plant mechanic with an inspection authorization. Okay, now so, I got it. Okay, I got it. okay. Sorry. That make it clear? I, I didn't mean to. I didn't okay. mean to trip okay. you. Okay, you guys throw these acronyms out. I don't know what the hell they are. Well, you know, we've, since we've been here this morning, we, I'm not used to being in, in production, and you guys have been throwing letters around all day, so I had to throw a couple back at you. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm easily impressed, but I'm impressed. So at any rate, we uh, these students restored this cub and uh, flew it up to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, they've actually flown it up three times. They actually got to fly in the air show at uh, Oshkosh. And um, the oldest person to fly it up there was 19 years old. When I say that we fly to Oshkosh, they fly themselves to Oshkosh. And if I'm flying with them, I'm usually doing dual instruction. So they're getting their, their dual cross country across the country. Mike, I've got socks 19 years old. <laughs> I mean, that, uh, what, uh, is that what I'm smelling? Uh, that might be. Uh, well, I'm not wearing any oh, today, you're not wearing so socks. it's good. Okay. So, uh, it is so important. When you say 19 years old, it's, we, our future is in these young people today. And, and I, I have so much respect for folks like you, and we're going to have uh, Kevin Lacey on uh, later on in the morning. At the, the time and the attention that you dedicate, and also, I guess, uh, uh, James Ray. We, we need to mention James and, and his uh, benevolence of what brought this to, to be here. Well, it's interesting you bring it up, and, and we, we all seem to be amazed that teenagers are flying airplanes across the country, but if we look back at a man like James Ray, <clears throat> James was a steel worker in Hawaii on December 7th, 1941, mm. and watched from across the harbor the Japanese bomb the fleet. He got really angry and joined the army and learned to fly. And when he was 19, 20 years old, he was bombing France on D-Day mm. to support Montgomery's part of the invasion. So Mr. Ray really, truly understood what the power of what young people could do. And um, he was a very successful businessman. Um, he, he realized that the thing that changed his life for him was to solo an airplane. He said that's when he went from being a boy to being a man. And then, um, so once he was successful, he started sp spreading some money around. He helped EAA with the Youth Lodge up there and, and supported the Young Eagles program. And little by little, things came together. He saw what was happening here in Lakeland, put some money into building the school, watched as students were, were getting their pilot's license and then restoring a cub. And then he came in and built us a a 12,500 square foot hangar where the students come every day after school and restore the airplanes. He says, well, cubs belong on grass, so they build a grass runway. He partnered with the airport, and so we have an international airport here at Lakeland. I don't know if our listeners know that Lakeland's now international, but we have a grass runway on an international airport, so that's pretty unique. Imagine that. And uh, up in Alaska, they have a uh, waterway at the International Airport. That was originally on the drawings, but in Florida, waterways on airports attract birds, and birds and airplanes are bad. Well, we, we'll work on that. We, we'll work on that. And, uh, but Mr. Ray also uh, recognized the value of maintenance. 
And without maintenance, these aircraft don't do their thing. And without pilots to operate the aircraft, of course, they don't do their thing. But let's, let, let's back up a little bit to why we're here to talk about maintenance. And Mike, I am uh, a point of order. I apologize, we didn't recognize Bob, Sierra, and George on our cameras. Oh. So this is all volunteer crew. Obi Young back there is the uh, Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. We've got Mike uh, there helping him. The, the studio audience, thank you for being here. Can, can I hear a round of applause for... Okay, all right, turn the sign off. That was all pre-recorded, guys. <laughs> There's nobody here. We're talking to an empty room. You can laugh now. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. but uh, did we say this was live? Did we mention um, it? Yeah, I think, I think okay. you mentioned it in passing. Mike, tell us a little bit more about how, if I was a young person or if I have kids, how do I get them involved with aviation? What, what's the most important? And this is right off the, I didn't set you up with this. This okay, is not no. a setup. So this is right out of the blue. Good thing I know these things. So uh, we have a kind of unique situation here in that we have um, Sondafan host summer camps. And I think that, I, I may be wrong about this, but 10 years old, they can start with the summer camps. They can go to high school here and become part of the Aero Club. And then Polk State College is on the other side of the airport. So, and their aviation program has a four-year professional pilot degree, maintenance management degree. So we call it car seat to the cockpit. You can come here for summer camp. You can go to high school here. If you're not fortunate enough to live in Lakeland or up at Oshkosh, they have a similar thing. Um, EAA chapters, you know, get a Young Eagles flight. Uh, the Ray Foundation's doing scholarships with, through EAA, through the EAA chapters. So there's a lot of ways nationwide for people to, to learn to fly if they're interested. And uh, Mike, we are, uh, we've mentioned that we're here at the Florida Air Museum mm -hmm. at the Aerospace Center for Excellence. And we're live. And we're live. And we're at the Sun and Fun Expo comp, uh, campus. But most importantly, and this is where I was trying to pull it out of you, but we're at the airport. You want to get involved with aviation? Go to the airport. And it's so important of, uh, I believe, uh, uh, Brian Terwilliger did the uh, runway uh, one six left and one way right. Mm. One six left. And a picture of a kid hanging on the fence so so important get your get your young people men women boys girls get them to the airport and uh, get them to what kind of airplane is that identifying aircraft noises what what kind of engine does that airplane have in it it just really ticks me off when i watch a movie and i see a dc-3 flying over and i hear a turbine <laughs> unless it's a turbine dc-3 there are those but this is the round motor uh, dc-3s and uh, you know that you're supposed to hear a, a couple round motors I digress. Yes. Mike, talk to me about the about some of the things that uh, I know that you guys refurbish aircraft, mm -hmm. you restore aircraft, you uh, you you operate aircraft, you fly aircraft. What's so so important about being a pilot and a mechanic on an aircraft? All right. Well, I I actually became a mechanic after after I was a pilot because basically it was self preservation. Um, that was just flying too much junk around, and uh, as, as a friend of mine once said, uh, it's easier to teach a mechanic to be a pilot than a, a pilot to be a mechanic, so I think I went about it the hard way. But um, what we do here is our students come over after school and start working on airplanes. Now, most of these students haven't been in shop class or haven't done anything, and they're, and they're starting out at 14 years old. When we got the hangar built, walking distance from the high school, we had all these young people coming in who were interested in airplanes, but they'd never really done anything with their hands. So we get them working on airplanes, and all of a sudden they gain some confidence. They understand how things work, uh, how things are put together. All of our airplanes are antiques. Uh, one, the, our newest airplane is a 1964 Cessna 150D. <laughs> so the neat thing about these airplanes is that they're very simple, uh, simple systems, bell cranks, pulleys, cables, so you can see mechanically how things work. Um, we build our own engines, mm -hmm. and we do everything. It's hands-on. And so for a young person who has never had shop class, because we've done away with those in public schools, um, they're getting to build something. And we're not building birdhouses. We're building airplanes. Mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with building birdhouses. No, birdhouses. And uh, I don't care if they're birdhouses, mailboxes, as long as it's done to a standard. 
and it's done as best as can be done. And that's what I try to tell all the, the young men, young women, uh, that they will come up to me for, with, uh, I've got a background in, uh, heck, I've been in aviation for 40 some years. I didn't know I was gonna make it to this age. But anyway, I made it. But the, the, the importance of attention to detail and making it right, doing whatever you wanna do, whatever vocation you choose, do it as best as you can do, better than anybody else. And if you do that, you'll be successful. I don't care what it is. Uh, Maytag repairman, uh, uh, mailbox uh, uh, upholstery. Mm -hmm. I love sewing. I mean, I admit it. And if, my wife, Mel, I'm sorry, Mel. I love to sew. I, no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, it, it's a manly thing to know how to operate a sewing machine because what can you do with a sewing machine? You make parachutes. Yeah, I was a parachute rigger in I'm, the Air Force. So. I'm a parachute rigger. I'm a senior <laughs> so. rigger now. And uh, I love doing repairs on parachutes and hot air balloons. But again, I digress. There's so much we're trying to get across to you here. <laughs> Mike, the, 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 what, what, is, what is this? It kind of looks like an aircraft part. Um, but there's no markings. So this could have come off of a John Deere tractor, a racing one, because it's streamlined. But I don't know. That's a good answer, because I did brief you that this was a flying wire off of a PT-22 Ryan. I'm getting forgetful. <laughs> but, but the thing is, is from the FAA standpoint, this is, our, uh, this is our, uh, our tribute to the FAA. This is a suspected unapproved part. SUPS, suspected unapproved parts. And uh, without a tag on this, and by someone that's, uh, that's designated and authorized to make that determination of what this is that meets its specifications. Um, Kevin corrected me before, it doesn't meet a type design. This was made before there was type design, but it, it meets its aircraft specs. And the, uh, it's so, so important when maintenance, uh, there's, there's maintenance that when, once you sign your name, for something that was done to a standard. Mm -hmm. How long does that repair or that maintenance belong to you? Forever. <laughs> you own it. Yeah. Does it make you stop and think before you make that signature? Oh yeah, absolutely. Have I done my homework? Yeah. Uh, and there's a, there's a term called fit, form, and function. Who determines, does the FAA determine that uh, this is uh, okay to go on an airplane? No, ultimately, the person installing it has to determine exactly. that it's, it's appropriate for that use. Exactly. And, and uh, uh, there are some people, if I was in the middle of the Sahara Desert and I had, uh, I had uh, bad guys coming over the dunes shooting at me, uh, would I put this on an airplane if it was necessary to fly to get out of there? Well, you probably would, or you could use it as a sword to fight them off. Or a stick or beat them or something <laughs> like that. But, no, it's so important to, uh, to realize that there, there's a time and a place, and we're not always in such a hurry to, to rush. And there's people that will try to mm -hmm. get you in a hurry and make a quick determination or rush a situation out of maintenance to get it back in the air. If we don't get this airplane up, we're going to lose $100 today. I'm sorry, it's not going to fly until Mike says it's ready to fly and he signs it and, and, and then we go. But we get in such a hurry, there's some things you can't rush. Right. And in maintenance, you can do things swiftly. And uh, I, I want to hear from how Tango 31 does swiftly uh, on the next, uh, next session. But uh, what gets you guys in a hurry over at the uh, Aero Club when you're doing maintenance on an aircraft? Well, you know, it's easy to get, you know, it's, it's sort of get their itis for mechanics. We're trying to get the airplane done. We're trying to make a trip. And uh, I'll tell you a quick story. In, in 2018, we flew up to Oshkosh with our old 1946 PA-11. And we got up there, and it was leaking some oil, and we thought we found the problem. And I took it for a, a, a flight around the pattern, which had Oshkosh is out to Fisk and around. So it's about a 20-minute flight. Bring it back in. The engine seemed to be running fine, but oil was running all down the side of it. Turns out it had, had broken a cylinder base stud and we ended up having to leave the airplane up there. You would think that was the worst thing that could ever happen to you. 1,100 nautical miles from home, antique cub, and had to leave it up there. Well, we had, our friends uh, at, at um, Don's Dream Machines were there mm -hmm. 
And he says, if you guys can get that engine off that airplane, I, I've got a truck here. So six teenagers in three hours in the hot sun in the emergency aircraft repair area took the engine off, put it in the, the truck. EAA was kind enough to uh, house our airplane until mm -hmm. we could get back up with an engine. You have to be willing to not fly it today. You can't. That would not have made it home. Mm -hmm. Simply would not have made it home. Mm -hmm. So... Is that there's times to be in a hurry, uh, but usually only when you're on fire. Right. There's a sense of urgency if you're on fire in an airplane. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Uh, and, and a few other things to be in a hurry, to, to get out of the way if something's falling and fixing to hit you. You get out of the way, you're in a hurry. But uh, typically, and, and oh, managers and, uh, and operations personnel, they, uh, they just can't, they cringe when, because who determines when that aircraft's ready to go? Well, the, the, the person who's signing it off is signing it for return to service. Maintenance. Anybody be sitting on an airplane, an airliner mm -hmm. somewhere, and they say, we're sorry, folks, we're going to a slight delay here at the gate. Uh, we have a little maintenance issue, and uh, as soon as it, uh, it's, it's ready to go, we'll be ready to go. All right, everybody use, oh, gosh, maintenance issue. You know, I'm one of the ones in the back saying, oh, great, maintenance issue. We got some mechanics coming out to look over the airplane, and and we're, uh, we're going to be doing a, a good job. And, and I know when it's ready to push, it's ready to push. Yeah. That's your feet. That's your, that's your intro. To, that's right, Ben. Yes, that's right, Ben. <laughs> we, uh, and again, we're getting ready to wind this one up. Um, but, Mike, it's, it's so, so important that we realize why we do this. And you're, how much are you getting paid to be here to do this today? Nothing. I'm not getting paid to be Mike, here today. Mike, 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 I gave you a perfect segue there. Kevin's going to eat us up on this one. You're getting paid all of the impressions and the young people that you're, in, you're approaching, the, the parents of those young people that say, you know, that Mike Z, he's kind, of a, he's kind of a cool guy. I'd like for my kids to meet him and learn what's going on at the, uh, at the Aero Club. <laughs> that, that's your payback. And uh, th there is no monetary value to what we get, hopefully, from having an impact on what's going on here in well, aviation. You know, my, my reward at my job is, is seeing these young people grow up and get it. They uh, learn how to do maintenance correctly. They know they got to look things up. Uh, watching them, their confidence and their pride when they have built something, they know they've done it right. And, and that builds confidence in them. And seeing that is very rewarding. And, uh, and, and it's not for everybody. Mike, and I'm sure that you had some, uh, some uh, war stories of those that have, have tried it, and just, it's just not their thing. Right. That's okay. Back them out and uh, wish them well. Always welcome them back, but if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. But I think it's really important for pilots to understand, thoroughly understand. Maybe they don't want to get their hands dirty and they don't want to, to uh, turn wrenches, but I think it's really important that pilots fully understand the systems so that they can appreciate what's going wrong and then make the correct um, actions to solve whatever the mechanical problem is in flight. You know, uh, and, and few people realize this or know it, but to do a little bit of research on Chuck Yeager, and Chuck probably is one of the most uh, well-known names in history of aviation, first man to break sound barrier. However, he was a mechanic before he was a pilot, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons that they selected him to, to go to the pilot uh, corps is because he, he fully understood the, uh, the internal workings, the systems, the structures of the mm -hmm. aircraft. And that's one of the reasons, other than his keen eyesight, 2015, till he was an old man. Uh, well, he's still around. Chuck's mm -hmm. still with us. Yep. He's, he's long of tooth. And, uh, and his solar panel is, is working extremely well. Doesn't that's have much hair anymore. Uh, by true. the way, that, that's what, you know, hair... Aging is, is, this is an age indicator for some people. That really irritates me when I see people with a lot of head of hair. <laughs> but, uh, but that's okay. I'll get over it. I got thick skin. I'm a mechanic. Uh, but Chuck Yeager was, uh, was, a, was, a, was a premier mechanic, and he has a lot of respect for mechanics. And, and I have a lot of respect for mechanics and pilots. I have respect for everyone who, who actually applies themselves to the, to, to the top of their degree. Yeah, I mean, it's important. Aviation, you can't make mistakes. I, let me change that. They, you will make mistakes. You need to be sure that you correct them and do things properly. Uh, 
Mike, last few words as we, uh, as we wind this up. Thank you so much for being here with us. And let's do this again sometime with a set. We get some sponsorship. We get a lot of money coming in. We can make a real nice set. But uh, we're going to sign this one off. Ben Coleman here with you with uh, Plain Time from the Florida Air Museum at the Aerospace Center for Excellence. That's for Carol. Carol got that somewhere. Carol's here. There she is. Thank you so much. We'll see you next interview.